we were having a dearth of significant decisions from the circuit courts until this week, that is. We have three, no less than three, really big decisions from the Second Circuit and from the Third Circuit. Let's start off with the Second Circuit. As background, we have previously reported how the Fourth and Fifth Circuits both held that there was no violation of the U.S. Constitution in the increase of U.S. trustee fees in January of 2018, even though, allegedly, there was a lack of uniformity because Chapter 11 debtors in two states paid substantially lower fees. But here comes the Second Circuit and a unanimous decision by newly appointed Circuit Judge Nardini. And indeed, he creates a split of circuits and holds that that January 2018 increase was unconstitutional because it violated the uniformity aspect of the bankruptcy clause of the Constitution because, as I said, debtors in two states that do not have U.S. trustees pay substantially lower fees. Well, we now have a split of circuits and, I'm thinking, a likely grant of certiorari for the term that begins this coming October. As you know, the Supreme Court no longer has mandatory jurisdiction to rule on cases finding federal statutes to be unconstitutional. But in this circumstance, I think there's a lot of money involved because, in addition, there is a class action case pending in the Federal Court of Claims seeking to get refunds for all debtors throughout the country who had to pay the higher fees. Now, let's go on to the Third Circuit. In fact, we had Judge Tom Embrill in the Third Circuit hand down three decisions, all in succession. Two of them, I think, are quite important. First, in one decision, Judge Embrill has, shall we call it, absolute fealty to the countryman definition of executory contracts, and it leads to a result in that case that some folks will find surprising. I don't have time to explain the case in detail because it would take me a good half hour, but you really ought to read about that case and read the opinion in my column on the ABI website. Significantly, Judge Ambrose said that the parties can draft contracts to avoid the result that he reached in that case. The other decision of note by Judge Ambrose deals with state sovereign immunity. As I read his decision, Judge Ambrose has held that a state does not, not have sovereign immunity when a debtor is suing a state or its instrumentality to augment the bankrupt estate. So that's a biggie. We will see whether other circuits follow the same interpretation of the Katz decision from some years back in the U.S. Supreme Court. I am Bill Rochelle, Editor-at-Large for American Bankruptcy Institute. I will return same time next week with something significant from the world of bankruptcy. Until then, be well. Good day.